Hi there. And right now I'm driving the Honda City EHEV Hybrid. Now this is not the first time I've driven this car. You can see my video on the link above where I explain how the hybrid system works on the City Hybrid and as well as the ADAS, that's the Advanced Driver Assistance Systems. And I'll come to that in a bit about how it's been over the last 10 odd days driving this car. Now if I go to my range over here, I have driven this car for right now exactly 446 kilometers and I'm getting an average of 19.9 kilometers a litre. So to clarify, I have not really taken this car outside Delhi. I've not taken this car outside Delhi. I mean, maybe Gurgaon one day and Noida one day, but that's still NCR. And I've not driven this on highways though there are some very high speed roads in Delhi. Now when I go through my uh, speed and time charts, I've driven for about just over 15 hours at an average speed of about just under 30 kilometers an hour, which is par for the course in Delhi. And the average of 19.9 .9 kilometers a litre has been improving as I'm getting used to driving this car and getting used to making the maximum of the hybrid system on this car. Now, if I had another couple of weeks with it, I'm sure I could get this car up to about 20 or 21, even maybe 22 kilometers a litre. And that's a lot more than the standard city. My mother has a fifth generation Honda City with the 1.5 petrol manual in VX trim. And her driver tells me at best they get a shade under 12 kilometers a litre in summer with air conditioning running. Uh, again, to clarify, I have not been running this car on eco mode. I'm running this car on regular mode because on eco mode, the air conditioning becomes a bit wheezy and it's been very hot of late. It's overcast today, but it's been very hot. So you need the AC going at full, you know, blast. So as I said, you become used to driving this car in a certain way as you live with it. One of the things I'm doing is right now, I'm coming off a flyover, I've lifted off the accelerator pedal and even if I put it just a little bit of juice and let the car harvest the energy from going downhill it's quite useful and it gets the mileage up there so my mom's driver says her car gives a shade under 12 and this car is giving a shade under 20 maybe even 20 by the time I return it um, that's a lot that's eight kilometers a liter more and you know but petrol is costing you know over 100 rupees in many indian cities right now i know the price cut has happened recently and hopefully global crude oil prices will be coming down a bit so i don't think there'll be massive increases but what i mean to say is that petrol is expensive and a car like this which is a regular sedan giving you 20 kilometers per liter is a very good deal but you have to keep in mind that the city EHEV hybrid costs 20 lakhs on, I mean, on road, I mean, or it'll be more than 20 lakhs. And is it paying, worth paying the premium of 6 lakhs for this car over a top spec Honda City? Maybe with the 8 kilometer a liter difference, and if you had the automatic and drove it yourself, maybe you'll get it, get the car regular Honda City up to about 13 or 14 so it may not be that much uh, my mom's driver is a very nice guy but he's not the most economical of drivers but I want to compare this car with say something like the Hyundai Vanna IVT and I had the Hyundai Vanna IVT uh, for a significant part of the second lockdown um, in 2021 and one of the things I discovered in that car is that it is highly economical it's not as engaging to drive as say the dcts that Hyundai makes but the ivt uh, was giving me a mileage of 15 to 16 plus in the city and that costs much less than this that car at full spec with the you know what what do you call it the ventilated seats that Hyundai gives that car is what it's a less than 15 lakhs so is it worth paying the premium for that much more economy? Well, it remains to be seen because the petrol prices are going to start going up again. Of course, government cut excise duties right now for inflationary reasons. They're probably adjusted again going forward. 
the other thing about living with this car, and I must clarify there is a button to switch off the advanced driver assistance systems, and I haven't because I have to live with them, is that they can be extremely irritating at times, you know, guys cut in front of you and the collision warning and mitigation system goes nuts. And, you know, when you've been driving in India a lot, it's a bit irritating, you know your way around it, but that said, we are an extremely distracted species nowadays. Most people are on their smartphones, even the guys who drive slowly on the fast lane. And when you overtake them from the wrong side, unfortunately, you discover there's this guy messaging on his smartphone. I've seen people doing FaceTime or the video calls on their smartphones while moving. Um, actually, having apps like CarPlay or Android Auto is good because you can't type on your phone. You can actually, but the phone knows you're in a car and certain times keyboard access on certain cars and I think it will improve with the next generation of uh, uh, CarPlay it will actually lock the keyboard you cannot type while you're on the move um, you can argue why can't a phone sort of disable its typing uh, when you're moving fast so what about the passengers huh? anyway so ADAS is very useful for a distracted species but I can find it extremely irritating like um, Right now, I'm on Rautula Ram flyover, and if I was to change lanes uh, without giving an indicator, the car would go a bit angry with me. See, it, no, it's not giving me a lane change warning over here. It, uh, it did give me a lane change. No, that's a car in front of me. That's a collision warning system. Um, yeah, it's a bit irritating. But, I mean, would you buy a car for much more economy? I mean, the Honda City lacks a lot of features. I'm not a big fan of the angle of the infotainment system because when the light is on top of you, it can reflect back. The air conditioning is very good. The buttons and all are very, very, it's very, very well done. I mean, the entire car looks very high quality. But you don't have ventilated seats. You don't have wireless charging. You don't have features that, you know, other cars in the segment have. So that's there. But yes, it's super economical. 20 kilometers a litre. Can I argue with that on a sedan? No, not really. Anyway, thank you for watching and do let me know, would you buy a strong hybrid car if it becomes available? In fact, the new uh, Maruti and Toyota Greta competitor, which Toyota will call the High Rider, will probably be available with a strong hybrid. So does it make sense? Is the extra fuel economy that tempting for you? Do let me know in the comments and yeah, what do you think about hybrids?